Ezekiel 7, 1 through 27. Devotional Focus Verse Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 7, 3 and 4. The end is a concept that can bring joy, excitement, and possibly relief. For example, completing a lengthy or difficult project brings a rush of satisfaction and accomplishment. A waiting family rejoices when they get the welcome announcement, the operation is over and everything went well. After completing mountains of paperwork and dealing with miles of red tape, adoptive parents mark the end of waiting and joyfully head to the airport to meet their new son or daughter. And consider the end of a war. What nationwide jubilation results when the announcement is made, the war has ended. In all these cases, the end is positive and good. However, in our focused verses, the end that was coming upon Israel was just the opposite. Ezekiel prophesied of a dreadful and devastating time when God's judgment would be poured out upon the people for their abominations. The phrase, Now is the end come upon thee, gives a sense of the urgency of this message. Israel would have no further chance to escape the consequences of their disobedience. Their disintegration as a nation was inevitable, and it would be a fearful and frightening time. Through the prophet, God pronounced that he would give them according to what they deserved, so that they would know that I am the Lord. While a remnant would be spared, individuals like Ezekiel, Daniel, and Jeremiah, who chose to stay true to the living God, the coming desolation would spread to the four corners of the land. We see a similar situation in our world today. All around us are signs that the end is very near, and God has given ample warnings in His Word. Tragically, as in Ezekiel's day, many people are unprepared. They continue on in their sins, going about their lives as though circumstances will never change. However, while destruction is imminent for this world, there is still hope on a personal level. God in His mercy is yet extending grace and giving souls an opportunity to return to Him. The door is still open. A better ending, an eternally blessed ending, is possible for those who will turn to God even now in repentance and faith. Background Information this chapter is another of Ezekiel's prophetic discourses. This one, similar to the message given in chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 describe God's wrath, verses 5 through 13 disclose the eminence and inescapability of the coming judgment, and verses 14 through 27 describe the shame and horror that would come to the people and the fact that no source of help would be found. The term four corners of the land in verse 2 indicates this was a message of doom to all of Israel. This included Jerusalem, though it had not yet been destroyed, Judah, which had not yet been completely conquered, and the northern kingdom already taken captive. In verse 3, the end alludes to both the end of God's patience and the imminent end of the nation. The judgment of God was based upon Israel's sinful choices, the evil the people had practiced, and the unrighteousness they had committed against God's name. The statement, Thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, meant the people would constantly be reminded of their iniquities. The refrain of verses 3 and 4 is repeated in verses 8 and 9. Watcheth in verse 6 means has awakened or dawned and portrays something that has been fully stirred to action. 
In verse 7, the Hebrew word translated mourning literally means circle and was sometimes translated as fate. The Israelites had come full circle to face the consequences of their rebellion against God. He would no longer look upon them with mercy or pity, indicated by the statement, Mine eyes shall not spare, in verses 4 and 9. In verses 10 through 21, Ezekiel used word pictures five times to impart God's message. The first two of those show that because of the people's persistent presumption on God's grace, retribution was unavoidable. Some commentators suggest verses 10 and 11 refer to Nebuchadnezzar as the blossom rod that would execute God's judgment against Israel's sinful pride, rather than the rod itself being deemed wicked. The rod's violence would punish the wickedness of the people. Verses 12 and 13 allude to the year of Jubilee that was held every 50th year. By God's instruction, at that time property was returned to the original owner. When the Babylonians approached, however, both buyers and sellers would have reason to mourn. The buyer would not rejoice in the property purchased because it would be of no use to him. The seller would mourn that he could not reclaim his property because the year of Jubilee would be canceled. All buying and selling would lose their significance in the face of the total disaster to come. The last three word pictures show that neither the people's strength nor their riches would save them, and that shame and horror would be upon all. Verses 14 and 15 allude to the futility of the city's watchmen since there would be no Israelite army available to respond. People outside the cities would die in battle. Those inside would perish from famine and pestilence. Verses 16 through 18 indicate the coming distress of the few who would escape. Hiding in the mountains, as subdued as doves and with knees weak from fear. They would take on the attire and behaviors of deep mourning. Even the wealth of the rich would provide no security and would be discarded as garbage. His ornament in verse 20 refers to the temple, a place God had ordained for exaltation, but that was being used for idolatrous worship. Since the Israelites had defiled the temple, God would set it far from them. He would let the heathen have it, looking aside as they violated and emptied even the very Holy of Holies, the secret place of verse 22. Ancient prisoners were linked with chains as they were transported, and the command in verse 23 to prepare such chains was an indication that they would be needed. Bloody crimes referred to murderous judicial decisions perhaps the ritualized killing of children. According to verse 25, the Israelites would try to negotiate peace with Nebuchadnezzar's army, but would not succeed. Disaster would follow disaster, yet none of their typical advisors would be able to help. Ultimately, the miseries and desolation caused by the Chaldeans would be as universal and complete as the Israelites' sin had been. Conclusion, those who are unsaved must call upon God today for mercy and be ready for the Lord's return. That is the end we look forward to with great joy, the end of our life here on earth and the beginning of an eternity in heaven with the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 7 Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, Thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine I shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, 
and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, An evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine I shall not spare, neither will I have pity, I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold, it is come, the morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness, none of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within, he that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed, their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord, they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein, therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it, and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses, I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor, then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled, I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord.